Hey, what's up guys? This is the Oppo Reno 2. It's a mid-ranger that aims to bring a lot of the features of the flagship Reno 10x Zoom in a more affordable package. So did it succeed? I'm Will for GSM Marina, and let's find out in our full review. The Oppo Reno 2 is an upper mid-range phone with a flashy design and some standout cameras, including Oppo's signature shark fin pop-up selfie cam. The phone is made from Gorilla Glass with an aluminum frame. Ours is the luminous black model, which is actually more of a deep blue. One thing to note is the camera bump. There actually isn't one. The whole setup sits flush to the back of the phone. One of the coolest highlights on the backside is the vertical Oppo logo, which is outlined by a neon glow. At first, I thought this was actually backlit by LEDs, but no, that's how it catches the light. If you're after a bit of a different look and some extra grip, Oppo also includes a premium case in the box, which is synthetic but feels a lot like leather. Overall, it's quite a sturdy and premium feeling package, but one thing missing from this build is waterproofing. The Oppo Reno 2 has an AMOLED screen and it's a sizable 6.5 inches with a 1080p resolution. One thing that makes it seem even larger is its tiny top bezel, which is possible because it keeps the selfie cam hidden inside the body. The pop-up selfie module is pretty satisfying to open and close, plus it's fast enough to use for facial recognition without any lag. It seems sturdy, hopefully its moving parts don't lead to breakage later down the line. The screen itself isn't outstanding, but is quite nice. Content looks sharp at 400 ppi, and you get deep blacks typical of AMOLED panels. Colors are punchy, though not too accurate, with whites coming out a bit bluish. Not too bad though. You get good brightness here, just over 500 nits maximum with the slider, but there's no boost in auto mode in bright conditions, so direct sunlight makes things a little difficult to read at times. There is an always on display on the Oppo Reno 2, which will give you the time and the date, but unfortunately won't let you know about notifications. The Reno 2's optical fingerprint reader sits beneath the display, and waking up the phone is fast and painless, and quite reliable. Unlike the flagship Reno 10x Zoom, the Oppo Reno 2 doesn't have stereo speakers. Its single bottom firing loudspeaker does a decent job though. Volume is very good, and the quality is crisp and distortion free. Headphones can be plugged into the 3.5mm jack. Quality through headphones is okay, but not great. Volume is below average, and stereo separation leaves more to be desired. There is a lot of storage available on board, either 128 or 256 gigs, and it's expandable too if you need more space with the hybrid slot. The interface on the Reno 2 is the latest ColorOS 6.1 over Android 9 Pie. If you haven't used an Oppo phone recently, you might be surprised that ColorOS 6 has an app drawer. It brings the interface a bit closer to stock Android than previous generations. If you want, you can spice up your home screen with options from the theme store. Navigation on the Reno 2 can be done either with on-screen keys or one of two gesture setups. The first is the more commonly used layout with a swipe from the side to go back. The second one goes back with a swipe from the bottom corner. One useful app bundled with the phone is the video editor called Soloop. It offers a bunch of editing features and can automatically add music to match the timing of your cuts. And the game space gives you options for performance, notifications, and brightness for enabled games. One of the upgrades of the Oppo Reno 2 over the previous model is a new chipset, a Snapdragon 730G, which is built on an 8 nanometer process. It's quite similar to the Snapdragon 730, but it packs a little bit more punch, thanks to some higher clock speeds and a new AI engine. In benchmarks, the Reno 2 posted some respectable scores, and in gaming, performance is quite good. I didn't notice any problems, even with some pretty heavy titles. The AI optimizations are set to improve battery life too, and it looks great here. With its 4000 mAh battery, the Oppo Reno 2 scored an excellent endurance rating of 102 hours in our proprietary tests. The phone also supports 20 watt Voke flash charging, and the respective charger comes in the box. With it we were able to get from 0 to around 40% charge in half an hour. Not insanely fast, but pretty decent. Let's move on to the cameras, which are a major selling point for the Reno 2. There's a 48 megapixel quad bay or main camera with OIS, a 13 megapixel telephoto camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide which has autofocus, and a 2 megapixel monochrome sensor for portrait mode. Photos taken with the main cam come out in 12 megapixels, and they are excellent. There's plenty of detail, accurate colors, 
good contrast and wide dynamic range. The processing is balanced with just the right amount of sharpening. When pixel peeping, some areas of a uniform color appear grainy, but it's not really a big deal. You can shoot in the full 48 megapixels, but if you do, the images won't have much extra detail, and the trade-off is a much larger file size. Unlike the flagship Reno 10x zoom, you don't get a fancy periscope telephoto cam, but the 2x unit here still does pretty well. Photos come out clear and detailed, with decent dynamic range. Even when using the 5x hybrid zoom, the results are surprisingly usable, though a bit soft. The Reno 2's ultra-wide camera is a lot less impressive. Shots are usable, but they're softer, noisier, and with narrower dynamic range than the other two cameras. Since the ultra-wide has autofocus, you can use it as a macro camera to focus on close-up objects. Picture quality is about the same, but the function adds some extra versatility to the whole setup. Portrait shots are taken with the main camera and the black and white depth sensor. Together, they provide excellent shots that are nothing short of flagship grade. Only occasionally will you find a problem with the edge detection. The black and white sensor also helps to create some interesting color filters and effects for your portraits. When the lights go down, the Reno 2's main camera still packs quite a punch. There is some noise here and there, but overall, these are again flagship level results. There is also a dedicated night mode, which does a good job of brightening up the exposure. Its usefulness depends on the individual scene, but the nice part is that it works on all three cameras. The Oppo Reno 2's 16 megapixel motorized selfie cam has fixed focus, and it does a great job. There's plenty of detail, and good sharpness throughout the frame. The Reno 2 can record video from the main cam and the telephoto at up to 4K at 30fps. Video stabilization is always on, so your field of view is always a bit cropped. And we weren't impressed with this implementation here, it just isn't very smooth. But 4K footage from the main cam has great quality, with plenty of detail and almost no noise. We did notice some corner softness though. 2x video from the telephoto is decent, but dynamic range is more narrow than on the main cam. There was some jitter here, due to some wind and compensation by the EIS. The ultrawide camera can only go up to 1080p and is a bit noisier, but overall its output looks pretty good, with some punchy colors. The jitter problem was still noticeable here, but not as severe. So that's the Oppo Reno 2. You get a sturdy and eye-catching design, a large and notch-free AMOLED screen, great battery life, solid performance, and versatile flagship-grade cameras on both the back and the front. There aren't a whole lot of downsides to mention here, except maybe the lack of waterproofing, and the stabilization and video recording is a little off. Otherwise, it's a really solid package, but maybe not as budget-friendly as some might have hoped. At around 450 euros, the Reno 2 is far from a budget device. It's just a lot of money to pay for a mid-ranger, and you can even find some flagships out there for this kind of cash, especially from last year. So although the Reno 2 is a great phone, unless the price does go down, it's tough to recommend this one. Thanks for watching guys, and see you next time.